Yo, 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 what is up? It is Cloverdale. <laughs> Welcome back to another Cloverdale Studio tutorial. So pumped today to be telling you guys why you probably don't need a compressor on your kick drums. For real. I, I've opened up a million projects and you guys all put compressors on your kick drums and you usually don't need them. But let's talk about, you know, some instances where you might need them. First, let's talk about what compressors do. Actually, no. First, up there, the subscribe button. If you're enjoying what you're learning, that's that's up first. Okay, up second, compressors. Let's load up a compressor right here. And we got a kick drum, and let's just take a listen to it with nothing first, right? And so this kick, you know, the kick sample looks pretty great. So I gotta figure out why am I adding a compressor in the first place, right? And when I'm looking at the shape here, up at this plugin, this is called Mini Meters, by the way. I recommend if you're producing music to get this plugin. It's only 10 bucks. They didn't even pay me to say that, but they should have. Uh, just kidding. Love you guys. It's a great plugin. Um, okay. So a compressor, you know, maybe I want to, you know, tame the tail end of it, right? So. Basically, it's saying, if the signal goes above this line, apply compression. And this says, okay, how quickly do we apply the compression? And then this says, how quickly do we lay off the compression? And what is compression? It's just turning the signal down. So just picture it like turning the volume down, right? Um, but it turns it down, then it bounces back up, and then it turns it down, bounces back up, turns it down, bounces back up, right? But in this case, we're dealing with just the same kick sample over and over and over again. So we really just need to worry about the compression over the span of one kick sample, right? And so here, look, it's look at how this has now changed the shape of my drum. And no wonder it's changed it that way, because it's saying, okay, attack time is, you know, two, well, you know, say seven milliseconds very, very short, but that seven milliseconds, that's that transient, right? So that's why that transient there is still very loud. And then the body is being ducked is because you have seven milliseconds, which the transient can go through the compressor. And basically it's just compressing everything after seven milliseconds. So that's why the kick looks like that. Now, does that kick look that great? Not really. It looks like it's a very thick, transienty kick. I would argue that this kick looks much more balanced, and you know the transient is kind of the peak, and then the body kind of feels the same, and then it kind of tails off. You know, I'd say that looks like a a good-looking kick drum. So you know, maybe a kick like this, and probably most of the samples that you're downloading from Splice or from wherever you're getting your samples from are already compressed. The sound designer that made the samples already compressed them and they're probably pretty balanced. Okay, well let's let's just take a look at this one here. Okay, so this kick is 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 not as as great. It's not it, it, you know, there's some maybe some some issues with it. And we can look, it kind of looks like an eyeball here. And the body is much much louder than the transient and it's going to kind of sound like that. It's not going to have as much punch because the initial hit of the kick isn't as loud as you know the body of it okay so this is probably an area where we could use a compressor right and how we do this right we're going to balance this out so same way we're going to let the attack time be a little bit longer and then we're just going to kind of compress the tail and let's take see if we can do that so we're just going to bring the threshold down have a longer attack and even wow look at that that kick is starting to look much more balanced and then at the end you know so now obviously that kick is much louder than this kick because we've turned the volume down that's all we're doing when we're compressing we're just turning the volume down and now i can turn the output back up and now we have kind of a much more balanced transient full kick than what we had before voila you know that's that's that is some kick drum basics with a compressor okay let's let's look at the inverse now so we this is a kick here that maybe the transient is a bit too too hard too harsh too loud right so maybe we'll add another compressor here and in this case we want a very 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 short attack time probably a pretty short release time because all we're trying to compress here is just this initial bit so then it'll be more balanced with the rest of the kick drum so I'm just trying to turn that little blue part down is all I'm going to try and do. So I'm going to bring the threshold down duh, 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 as I bring it down. Oh, look, it's not really working. It's kind of just, you know, that first initial hit 
is still kind of going through. Why is that? And that's because computers are only so fast, right? Ableton is just sort of reading this information. I could be routing this my voice and it would be doing this all in live time, right? In, in real time. But uh, so because computers can only read information so fast, we need to actually give it this little look ahead thing. And what it does is it says, okay, I'm going to I'm going to skip ahead in the digital information and I'm going to look ahead 10 milliseconds just so I can preemptively apply the compression so that I can catch that initial transient. So if I turn that look ahead to 10 milliseconds, basically it's going to start looking to apply the compression a little earlier. And look now, you know, now we're starting to see a much more balanced signal. You know, we don't have that crazy transient spike that we had before maybe we'll apply a little bit more compression that way and then we can turn it back up at the end and now we have a lot a much stronger low end than we did before we're really pulling out that sub and we've, we've really pulled out the sub and kind of balanced that kick drum a lot better um so you know, that is probably, those are the reasons why you would compress a kick drum. And for the most part, though, you don't really need to. You know, I, I think you guys should be looking at the kicks that you have, taking a listen and realizing that most of it can kind of come from EQing and sculpting it that way. Uh, and then after you've done some EQing, maybe just take a look at it. Grab this mini meters plugin or, or just look at the waveform of it and say, okay, is my transient much louder than my body of my kick or is my transient much quieter than the body of my kick and uh, if so maybe you might uh, crack out a compressor to apply it that way uh, if not just leave it it's great delete those compressors stop confusing yourself stop adding on plugins and effects and stuff that you don't need that's it all right uh I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you learn lots. Uh, be sure to subscribe up here or watch some other videos up here. Or if you want to book some private lessons, uh, the description is in the bottom. I do one-on-one -on -one Ableton lessons. Load them up. Uh, also, check out some of my music or buy the High Octane Tech House drum kit. It's all in the description. Uh, I'm Cloverdale. Hope you guys learn lots. I'll be back next week. Okay, peace. Bye.